Hey, this is Jared Arnett, Executive Director of SOAR. Uh, great to have everyone out today. We, uh, we're on our weekly update. We're calling it The Future of Appalachia. And uh, this, is, this is a show where we take once a week and share some of the stories uh, and, uh, and talk to some of the people who are making a difference, who are part of the future of Appalachia. And uh, essentially we make the case that there is. A, the debate is over. There's a future in Appalachia. Um, and we're going to talk about that some today. I'll give a, uh, a quick update here before we jump into our interview. Um, we do have uh, Mayor Les Stapleton from the City of Prestonsburg here with us today. And uh, we'd encourage you, if you're on, if you see this, share it with your friends. Uh, like it, comment it, comment on it. If you've got questions, just go ahead and add it uh, to the video. And uh, we'll, we'll do our best to get to those if you have questions um, throughout the entire session. Feel free to be a part of the discussion. I um, want to recognize a, a couple of our most recent Blueprint partners. They've signed up and uh, you know we've got what we put together as a region called the Regional Blueprint for 21st Century Appalachia. And now we're seeking out partners who want to help us implement that in their communities. Uh, so we've had a couple, couple new ones who joined recently. We had Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center, uh, that's down in, down in Paintsville. Uh, Royalton Trail Town, over in Royalton, that's in McGoffin County. Uh, had the Beattyville Enterprise that, that's joined and working together with us. Um, we have uh, the City of Pikeville, we have Appalachian Regional Healthcare, uh, who recently joined as a grassroots partner. Um, so we appreciate Appreciate those new partnerships and uh, encourage you if you've, if you've not signed up to be a partner, you can go to our website and uh, figure out how to do that. Uh, uh, the City of Prestonsburg is a blueprint partner, so we're, we're honored to have them a part of this, uh, this great network of people who are trying to make a difference in the f future of our communities. Uh, I had the opportunity in the last, um, in, in just the last week, actually last weekend, I was in, uh, I got to travel to Boston and uh, speak at a, a conference at Harvard. This is something that I never thought I would ever uh, be doing. Uh, I, I'm raised in, I was raised in what you call the head of a holler. And, um, and I mentioned that at, during my talk at Harvard and I asked them if they knew what a hollow was and none of them even knew what a, what a hollow was. And I explained to them that it was a holler. I also explained to them that it's Appalachia, not Appalachia. Um, that, you know, it's like I threw an apple at you. And uh, so I, they, there's now a well-informed group of people in Boston that know how to say Appalachia. Um, but I got to share the, the story of what's happening in our communities, in our region, um, in, in, a, in a conference that was based on poverty. And I talked about opportunity uh, because that's what we believe is here. And that's the story we wanted to tell. Uh, I did get to listen to the keynote speaker that was there. Her name was Marion Wright Edelman. You may have heard of her. She was uh, very active in the civil rights movement. Um, she was the, the founder of the National Children's Defense Fund. Um, and uh, she, she shared a couple neat stories, uh, two that I want to share before we get into our conversation with the mayor. Um, one, she talked about when she was a child in South Carolina, she's African American, uh, her father was a Baptist minister, she went uh, to uh, a department store with her Sunday school teacher, and she was young enough that she couldn't read real well, and she went to the wrong water fountain, uh, she went to the one for white people, and uh, she said her Sunday school teacher panicked and grabbed her and explained to her she couldn't drink there, and uh, she went home and told her dad, and uh, she said, and from that point on, I did what any little girl would do. I did what I had to do. And every time I saw those water fountains, I changed the signs. And uh, I, I got a kick out of that. And um, she was just, uh, she, it was a fantastic story. And then she, she closed with, um, kind of, I guess her dad being a Baptist minister, she shared with uh, some life lessons from Noah's Ark. And uh, she just shared three, and these are, you can Google this and find there's a lot more, but she Googled three that kind of hit home, with, or she shared three that hit home with me and our work. Uh, the first one was don't miss the boat, uh, pretty pretty clear, uh, and that speaks to what we're doing here, I think, is that you don't want to miss this opportunity to be a part of the momentum that gets away from the complaining and worrying and, and the poor is me and gets past that and says we're going to do something. 
Um, and then the, uh, the, the second one was we're all in the same boat. Uh, we're really not working against each other. We've got to work together uh, in that. And the third one was the Titanic was built by experts and the Ark was built by amateurs. Uh, this idea that we really can at a grassroots level with people across this region make a tremendous difference uh, on our own. Um, so I thought those were three, three points that kind of spoke to me. Her other thing, her lesson from her dad was, uh, Marion, always follow the need. Where there's a need, you go there and make a difference and you help. And uh, she said, that's what I've done and I've made a career out of it. So great story. You can Google her and watch some videos on her. It was, uh, it was very inspiring to get to hear her story. Uh, and and a, a great opportunity for me to get to connect uh, with people who have only heard of Appalachia but fail to understand it. Um, and so we shared a lot of stories, built some new partnerships, and uh, we'll continue to work those partnerships to help our communities. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's jump in. We've got the, the mayor here with us, uh, Mayor Stapleton. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great. Great day. Even if it's a rainy day. It is a rainy, kind of messy day out, and uh, boy, the weather in Appalachia has been crazy the last few weeks. We've had snow, we've had 80 degrees, we've had uh, floods. You know, one of the few places in the world where you can enjoy all four seasons in, in a week. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes a day, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, sometimes. Um, but uh, like I said, the city of Prestonburg is a blueprint partner. Uh, as soon as we launched that program back in the fall, uh, they were they were excited to be a part of it. You jumped on, you signed up, and said, we want to be a part of this. Uh, so before we kind of get into your work and get into what's happening in Prestonburg, I'd love for you to just share a little bit about about Les, where you're from, and uh, and why you got involved in, in community and, and leadership. Well, I was born and raised in El Corner City. Okay. Right here in Pike County. Spent a lot of time here in Pikeville growing up. Um, played sports. Uh, joined the state police in 1986 and was assigned to uh, Floyd County. And I've sort of been there ever since. Okay. Um, so you were a state policeman, right? Yeah, I retired. I okay. retired 20 years of state police. And it, you know what? I got to see a lot of areas that a lot of people don't see, and I got to talk to a lot of people that don't normally get to talk to. Mm -hmm. And it's it was really a great learning experience. The whole 20 years was a great learning experience. Some good, some bad, but uh, it was a great learning experience that I, I was really interested in. I, I, I can't pay for the experience I got there. It, yeah. it can't be bought. No, no school. Yeah. And then when I went, I, I, I got on the city council, I saw... Uh, I had a son who was getting ready to leave for college. I said, well, you know, when he comes home, and then I looked around, there wasn't a lot for him to come home to us. Well, let me see if I can make a difference. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I share that a lot that, you know, there was, there was a time in my life when, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do for a living. And I realized with my life I wanted to make a difference. Like, how do we find a way to give back and, and change the outcome uh, of, of our communities and for our neighbors? Uh, so... Let, let's talk about what's happening in Prestonsburg. Man, so many oh. great things. It's exciting. Don't know where to start. Uh, really. uh, um, we, we talk a lot about, when we talk about development, um, a lot of times you go into a community and people want to approach it and say, well, what, what don't we have? What do we have to get to fix ourselves? And we like to talk about what do you have and how do you expand on those? And you guys have a lot of great assets in, in Prestonsburg. You know, when uh, when I first got on board, my city council, and I talked to the to all the department heads, and we all got together, and, and a lot of the concerned citizens, and we had to figure out what we had to work with, what we could promote for the city of Prestonsburg as quickly as possible and as inexpensively as possible. And I said, you know, we've got the terrain. Mm -hmm. We've got natural beauty. Let's capitalize. Yeah. So we started with trails. Uh, we have a water trail. We have the paddle fest that we do. We've got uh, 30 miles of mountain bike hiking, horse trails. You know, we've got just about anything you want to do around Pressburg. Plus, we have that small town feel. Yeah. We are a small town. We're small right. town America. Absolutely. And what's your population in Pressburg? We're 3,500. Yeah. And it, it's spread out pretty big, over about eight square miles. Wow. But it's, uh, you know, you go downtown and it's, uh, we are small town America and, and people value that. There's a lot of value in that. Right. Absolutely. Um, so you got the trails and one of those, what's the name? Sugar? Sugar Camp Mountain Trails. That's the ones we developed. And I got to brag on, I have a trail um, committee now. Yeah. And I got to brag on them. 
They're actually developing a new beginner's trail. It's for someone who has very little, if no, experience. And uh, they're going to put in a bike park, for lack of a better term. And it's going to have berms on it. It's mm -hmm. going to have hills on it. So you learn to jump. You learn to climb. You learn learn how to do all this stuff before you get on the trail. Okay. So that, that's going to be a great asset to the entire area. People come and learn how to become a bike, mountain biker yeah. before they go mountain biking. Right. I think I saw a story. Didn't you, didn't you all, uh, you set some traps out there or something. And it, Coyote traps. <laughs> and it, I saw the video of you letting one close on your hand. I guess some people. Well, uh, we've got a bad coyote problem. Right? Yeah. I mean, they're running the streets at night. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I heard one last night around my house. Uh-huh. How? So, and we've got to deal with them. We're starting to lose pets. They're starting to go on to yeah. orchards and take pets off. And I was trying to tell people, look, it's not something that would hurt your pet. Right. If they come, if we come up, and I say we, we the city is not doing this. We have a trapper who is trapping on our property. Right. He's licensed. He follows all the laws. Yeah. I mean, everything's legitimate. It's right. right front. But I want to let them know if a pet got hung up in one of those traps, they're going to be released. Right. And it's not going to kill them. It may beat them up a little bit. They may get bruised or a little right. wild leg, but it's not going to kill them. Right. We don't want people to think we're out there just being malicious towards pets. Absolutely. Um, I thought it was a great way to respond to it. That video, you trap right on your hand. Well, uh, we had to get in front of it some way. Let right, people know absolutely. that we're, we're not inhumane. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the Mountain Art Center a minute. That's a oh. great asset you've got there in Prestonsburg. I grew up in, in Sayersville, and, uh, you know, I've... I found my love for music at the Mountain Arts Center. Started taking piano lessons there when I was in high school. Ended up playing in the junior pros at one point for a little while, and uh, you know now, uh, in my in my side life, my hobby, I'm a, a partner in a music store. Still love music, um, and you know while we're talking about the Mac, talk about kind of partnerships with other organizations and how you've approached that from the city and how you've structured them because I know that's an interesting one there. Well, you know, uh, I, I played a lot of sports in my life, and I've been involved with a lot of groups that understand, I understand the team concept. So I'm all about partnership, partnerships, partnering up with people that can be an asset to different different groups, different yeah. organizations, or different entities like the Mountain Arts Center. Um, of course, we uh, partnered up with the college, and uh, we went through, this is our third president. Uh -huh. They've all been the very supportive of the entire project. It's a uh, it's a partnership that allows uh, they do marketing, they do management, and then of course we have a separate partnership with a recording studio. And you being a musician, we have a recording studio. A lot of people don't realize it's second to none. It's really nice. It's uh, it's got the newest equipment. Uh, it, we've had last year we had twenty six. I call them albums. Mm -hmm. I think they're CDs now. <laughs> but I think we've had 26 that were cut there last year. Yeah, that's Complete awesome. CDs, not counting some singles that were done. Right. So we got people coming away from this area to come here yeah. to do their music. Yeah. And the Mountain Arts Center, you know, it's, it, it, it is so, in, it's invaluable to the city of Pressburg. There's meetings there on a regular basis. Yeah. People don't realize how much there's always going on there. Yeah. Uh, the Kentucky Opry, I would put them up with any opera group, any of those uh, theater group type groups in Gatlinburg at yeah. any given time. They've all they've always been fantastic. Right. Always have a great show. We could we could be competitive with any of them, yeah. no doubt in my mind. So one of one of our blueprint goals is to be a destination, to make Appalachia a destination. I think you're making a lot of a lot of progress around that in Prestonsburg. You've got the Mac, you've got these trails, um, you've got Jimmy Wiley State Resort Park there, right on uh, is it within the city limits? Yes, it right is. Up yes, it, it is. Yeah. Um, so you've got that asset. You've got a lot of great things going on there. Well, you know, uh, and, and I love social media. Yeah. It's used for the right purposes. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times people will take a negative and they just try to, they try to build on negatives out there. And I'm going to use this as an example. Um, uh, not long ago, the state uh, had some issues with some electrical wiring stuff at the amphitheater. Yeah. So... You know, that's a fine arts area. Right. Which ties right into Mountain Arts Center. Yeah. So the city of Prestonsburg has uh, been negotiating with a lease uh, with the uh, state uh, park. Okay. Now, if we can get that, we can get it back in shape, and we can have the theater open. Awesome. 
That's our goal. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what about the pool over there? Huh? Is that still in the Everything was going great. Uh-huh. And this water hit. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, some water got up in it, but you know what's a good thing for us is it drained out. So our pipes are clean. <laughs> That's good. So the, the, the pipes are working. Yeah. Now, we're, we're making progress on that. We have all intentions to open it up on uh, the 1st of June. Is when yeah. We always open our pools. Um, there's still some work to be done, but I tell you what, I, I've, got, I've been blessed with the employees that we have. Even yeah. seasonal employees or, you know, kids are off from college and working in the summers. They work so well. All right. So it, it's pretty exciting. That's great. Um, well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit. Um, let's talk about broadband real quick before we jump into some other things. Okay. That's a kind of a core foundation of, of our blueprint is that communities need to be connected, and uh, and for all these other goals, everything else we're trying to do. If you're a tourist, you want access to Wi-Fi and you want your cell phone to work. If you're trying to do small business development, you want to be connected to social media and to be able to sell on eBay. You want these connectivity options. If you're live streaming something from the Mac, you've got to live stream that through a, a fiber cable so you can get it out to the world. It really just opens up uh, a whole new opportunity for small towns. Uh, what's your all status on that? And I know you've been working on some things and uh, what are your thoughts around it? We've, uh, we have had three different Organizations or two, and then one private feasibility study done. Yeah, I think we um, helped you get one of those card grants early on. You did, pay yes. for a part of that. And you know the thing about it is, is uh, our terrain is great, right? Until you want to put my, <laughs> till you want to put that fiber optic up, right? Then it right. changes things a little bit. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're looking at the best options we have. It may be that we go with. Uh, um, an existing company that has the fiber optics or has the build the resources to put fiber optics in place, and we sign up some type of franchise contract with them. Our goal is to make sure that the city of Prestonsburg, or the citizens of Prestonsburg, the yeah. business owners, the people that come into this town, it's important for them right. to be able to have access to the rest of the world. Right. Right. Um, for example, right now, you know, yeah, without. Good internet service, good infrastructure. We couldn't be doing this show. Right, absolutely. Um, so we don't want people to think there's no internet in Appalachia or there's no internet in Prestonburg. You guys are. You guys have. Who are your providers there? We have Southern Link. Yeah. We have Intermountain, and I think we have one more AT and T. Yeah. Now, right now, there is some fiber optics through in, through uh, Intermountain and through um, Southern Link. Yeah. The entire town is not covered by right. optics yet. And my goal is to make sure that whatever we're able to work out, right. that we eventually get good, high-speed internet out to everyone yep. in, the, in the city. We talk about two things with internet, affordability and availability. Yes. Like you got those two things. I know that's that's where you guys are, are headed toward. I'll, uh, I'll open up, um, just take a pause here for asking another question. we got several people watching live right now. Um, share it, share this with your friends, and also get a part, be a part of the discussion. Um, ask a question. If you want to know about how, uh, how, the, how the mayor did a project or how the city of Prestonsburg approached a project uh, or challenges they had, and I'm going to ask some of those questions, but feel free to ask those, and we'll do our best to answer them. Jared, I just know some who I was on there. I'm going to yeah. pull out that Vicki Doucette uh -huh. uh, from McGoffin County, works with Royalton uh, Trail Town. Yeah. You know, she's done a wonderful job over there. Right. And... Uh, she she works hard. Yeah, she works very hard at what she does, and and what it all boils down to is people take interest. Absolutely. Uh, if I can back up just a minute, yeah, we're talking about Sure Camp Mountain Trails. Yeah, and I had my trail. I got off on a side trail. Oh, that's okay. You know we have, and this was last fall. We've had over thirty-two thousand volunteer hours. Wow. It's not thirty-two hundred. We're talking about thirty-two thousand. I literally had people in this group. Paying other people to work on these trails. <laughs> that's incredible. But you know, um, that's what it takes. It is. I mean, it is. It, you can't, the, the value of that, there's no way to put a dollar value. Yeah. Right? Because they can read, well, we'd like to do this. Okay, great idea. Cool. Right, right. Uh, but I don't have any money right now. We got this. Right. So, you know, the fact that uh, I got the most Burlocks, Josh Turner's, Josh Daniels, Timbo Branham. I've got the and Frankie that works with them. You yeah. know, I've got these guys that are out there and, and 
some of the stuff they've done, it's amazing. And well, until you've been on these trails, you won't really appreciate it. If somebody wanted to get on the trail, is there a place they can go to look up information? Or what are they, sure. where are they open? Uh, they what go to the Sure Camp Mountain, SureCampMountainTrails.com. Or they have a Facebook page. Okay. They contact the city. We have some maps. All right. Um, we have two trailheads, one down by the lake where the old horse stables used to be. Okay. That's what I described it. Yeah. And then we have one up on uh, Sure Camp Mountain, which is up by the, uh, used to be the industrial park. Now, um, Mountain Cops got some big places. Okay. There. Gotcha. So we have a maps there. Right. Uh, they're very, we have a lot of signage up. Yeah. And the good thing about these trails is they're located in about a 400 acre area that we've leased. Yeah. So you can't get lost. Right. If you go down, you end up on a roadway. If you go back up, you end up on where you're at. Right. So, right. Yeah, it's, it's great trails, too. That's good. Uh, and you're talking about people taking local ownership. We've seen that in other communities. Oh, it's so yeah. exciting. We saw, uh, well, if you go over Pine Mountain over in Letcher County, I shared a video a few weeks ago. They built these new overlooks oh, yes. on Pine Mountain, mm -hmm. and uh, I was talking to uh, Missy Matthews, who's I think chair of their tourism group there in Alachua County, and she said our local companies chipped in. We didn't go trying to get grants. We didn't wait for somebody to do this for us. We volunteered. We had volunteers come out. We built these. We paid for these. We did this. I mean, that for me, it's so freeing for us to think. You know, let's take ownership of our own future. You know. Uh and I'm seeing more and more of that across the region. People are realizing, look, we can't wait on the handout. Yeah, right, absolutely. If you wait on it to be given to you, yeah, it's too late. Yeah, you've got to go get it. Right, absolutely. Uh, you just, you just, people have to take the initiative. And I'm not just talking about government <laughs> officials or, and you can't, you got to say leaders because even if they're a private citizen, they become a leader. They're leaders. Yeah, they can step forward. And, and I have people come to me all the time. Why well, do I do this? Okay, <laughs> do it. What, what can I do to help you? Right. And go. Right. And that that is a, a, a kind of a larger regional level where we, that's where we try to exist. We try to find people who have innovative ideas and great projects and help connect them to resources and partners to, to make sure they, they happen. Well, you know, we have a lot in common with Sea of Babyville. And yeah. The rain and everything. They have a lot of tourism going on. We have a lot of uh, the, the adventure tourism, eco tourism, or college right. tourism. Right, right. And uh, just recently through uh, the Area Development District, we, we, we're coming together. Yeah. Uh, their mayor and, and I have not been able to cross paths yet. Yeah. It's just due to uh, some changing schedules. But right. we have all intentions of getting together here soon. And uh, our small businesses are going to go see their small businesses. Yeah. And, you know, uh, what's working in Babyville, we'll work in Prestonsburg. Right. We'll work in Whitesburg. We'll work in Hazard. Right. We'll work in Elkhorn City. Yep. And this is what we have to do. We can, we can no longer sit in our little world yeah. and expect to move forward. We've got to move forward now. I think that's a great component of regionalism, not necessarily getting together and planning together and do a project, but learn from each other. Sure. You know, learn what you what mistakes did you make, here's what I've messed up on, or here's what's worked for us, and, uh, and just share resources and, and realize we're not competing against uh, each other. You know, I, I've had a couple, I've, I've been fortunate that I've got to speak to a couple groups, some about trails and some about just trying to move forward and stuff. And, you know, the big question is, well, how'd you do it? Or well, what did you do to start? Well, you jump in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you jump in and then something's going to happen. Well, good or bad, something's going to happen. Absolutely. Just, we, our, our slogan is, we refuse to accept the risk of doing nothing. We oh, talk yeah. about that yes. a lot in our office. I mean, because we get asked, what's the future of Appalachia? Like, we're going to wait and find out. And, you know, we're just not going to wait and find out. We're going to impact it. We're going to make a difference in it. Uh, no community can accept the risk of doing nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and I'm going to throw this out there. It's a quote I saw not long ago, and I'm paraphrasing. Basically, it says, the people that do nothing stand in the way of the people who want to move. Yeah. And you just got to find a way around them. Yeah. You know, get on the train, get off the tracks. And there, there'll, be, there'll be projects that, that don't work, there'll be thick. But you got to take a risk in this type of situation. We can't be so conservative that we're scared to step out and, and take a risk. we got to be good stewards of public money and resources, but at the same time, we gotta, we got to try some new things. You know, Jared, I, I have an analogy. That I have coached a high school baseball team here for quite some time. I have an analogy, and we have a sports guy, Josh Ball, in the room with us. Yeah. Josh, do you know how many home runs that uh, um, Babe Ruth had? 
I know he struck out more than he hit home runs, though. Who cares? <laughs> does anybody does anybody count his strikeouts? The fact that he got the bat and swung, yeah. they was hoping to see a home run. Didn't care if he struck out, waiting for the next time. Yeah. And that's the way we've got to be. We've got to move forward that way. Yeah. We can't no longer stand back. We can no longer stand back and say, hey, I don't know, maybe. Right. You got to go. Yeah. You absolutely do. Well, you talked a little bit about one partnership with another community uh, in Beattyville, yes. saying how do we work together regionally. Are there any other tourism-type projects? Was there a, a river trail or some? It seems like I remember hearing some things that you've been working with some other communities. I will with. tell you this: I've been to some meetings with Pete Runyon and it's the friends of the Tug Fork River. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually in Lawrence County in a meeting, and uh, I'm going to a meeting tonight over in Williamson. I think it is. Uh, I'd have to actually look at the address. But what they've done over there is they have a group of people that's got together and said, "Hey." We want to turn this into an event. We want to have a place where they can float and fish and enjoy the Tug Fork River. Yeah. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of work to be done. Right. But because of the effort that some private citizens has brought forward, they're bringing both the head of the West Virginia Fish and Wildlife and the head of the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife together. Oh, that's great. You know, with that river being the state line, basically. Yeah. You get them both on the same page. If both these groups are working together with this third group, which is Friends of the Tug Fork. Right. It's amazing what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It sure is. Uh, what have you learned? You've been mayor now. How long is this your? How many years? I, I, my, I'm fourth year. I'm fourth yeah. year as mayor. What, what have you learned in these four years? Um, I, <laughs> uh, do it and go on. Yeah. It, you know, you're, some people's going to like it. Some people's not. Yeah. Get good people around you yeah. to help you make good good decisions, and which my council does, and I have a lot of department heads, I have a lot of other resources yeah. that I go out to for different fields. Get the best idea you have and go. Yeah. Because they're going to be naysayers. I don't care what you do. Yeah. You know, I, I've said this a bunch of times. You know, if if I had a duck that went around town laying golden eggs, somebody would complain about duck feathers. Yeah, <laughs> but you know you can't let that you cannot let that determine how you react or how you act. You yeah. got to keep going. Yeah, that was a, that's actually another life lesson from Noah's Ark is like, ignore the critics, get done what's got to get done. Yeah, I mean, get that's, done. that's one of them. Uh, again, if you've got a question, um, feel free to feel free to share them. We got a lot of a lot of comments. Um, any, any questions? We'd, we'd love My wife Tanya's on there. I, I'm hey, about her. Hey, yeah. give, her a, give her a shout out there. She deserves it. I think my wife's on here too. She's, you know, if, if, if I know we'll always get one share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Always one share. Every yeah. time. I know yeah, we're getting at least one, one is guaranteed. Well, you know, uh, the people that I see on here are people who have gotten involved. Absolutely. One of them. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of people on. I got some love hiking the uh, Sugar Camp Mountain. Uh, Josh shared that link there to Sugar Camp Trails if you want to get on and, uh, and share that or check it out, please do so. Any questions uh, for the mayor? Hey, it's a good time to ask. Yeah, we got... We I'm got, live. I can't back out of it. That's true. You got him <laughs> in a corner. Uh, Jerry, while, while we're doing this, if you don't mind, and I don't want to make it all about Christmas because no. there's so much more going on. You know, you've got... Uh, a lot of people don't realize we have a Hatfield McCoy theater show over at Stone, Kentucky. Yeah. We have uh, Artist Collaborative Theater up in Elkhorn City. Yeah. We have uh, zip lines here in Pikeville. We have water access here in Pikeville. Co Run, I've talked with Mayor Scott, is going to be putting in a ramp soon to yeah. have a longer trip from here to Co Run. You know, um, everybody is doing something in the area. And now you start to see more collaboration. With right. Everybody. Right. Um, I've attended a lot of council meetings or commission meetings for other cities, yeah. and other areas, and, and I learn every time I go. Yeah. And uh, they come visit us, and we'll sit down and talk. I have to brag on uh, the entire Appalachian region, in that almost every leader. Of course, there's again we talk about naysayers. But yeah. Almost every leader is like, you know, hey, it's great. What can I do? Right. You know, what can I do to help? Yeah. And with that going on, 
we're gonna we're gonna survive. Yeah, absolutely. Now everybody says, well, coal. You know, tourism will never replace coal. Right. Nothing mm -hmm. is going to replace no, coal. No. But if coal comes back. Look at that added, right? Uh, it being the added activity we have there. Yeah. It's awesome. It is awesome. We talk a lot about. Uh, so we got seven goals in our blueprint, and we don't think you can do any one alone and fix the problem. Like no. all of it, it's got to be collective, and you do that because there's organizations that step up and say, "Hey, I'm passionate about." Uh, starting a small business and they do it sure. and they help small business there's people that are passionate part, we have partners that are passionate about recruiting new manufacturers and distrib distributors to our region they're out doing it uh, and there are people who are passionate about regional foods and they're building farmers markets and they're and that you know and there's people passionate about healthy communities and you've got a great diabetes coalition based out of Prestonsburg that are uh, helping address those problems and all these problems have to be addressed. No one person or organization can do it all. Um, we try to bring that framework and say, hey, we're all working toward this common goal. We're, we're all in this together. And, yeah. and you know something you said there that really uh, it strikes close to me is our youth. Yeah. Our youth need a reason to come home. Absolutely. They do. What would you tell the next generation? The, the kids growing up in Prestonsburg or <laughs> that have moved away, uh, you know, what's your message to them? Wow. Um, <laughs> you know, I will tell you, you this. that one before this job. I'm going to tell you this. We've got some, uh, I have, and I'm going to say young kids to me. Yeah. I watched them grow up. But they are coming home. Right. It's starting to happen. You know, the exodus we had going out here, it's yeah. starting to change. They see the value in what we have. Now, we've got to find work for them. You know, I don't have a lot of flat land right. uh, around Prestonburg that we can develop. We have to do what we can. We have smaller businesses. Yeah. You know, Pottle has, uh, they've got some big businesses coming in up here. Yeah. When I met with the president of uh, Interblue, uh -huh. and uh, I think Josh may have been standing close by when he and I talked, and I told him, I said, look, we don't have a lot of flat land on this, but let me tell you what I've got. i got a beautiful, small town. i got a low cost of living, and I went through all the assets we had, and he yeah. said, we need our people to contact you. I said, yes, you do. Yeah, they yeah. can live there, yeah. drive here, and work. Absolutely. So you know, we got to take advantage of what we got at that particular time, and then start developing. And you all are uh, Foy County is a partner in the, uh, the industrial park in Martin County, right? Yes, yeah. we are. So uh, yes. so that that is uh, in in most cases is going to be one of the sites that you would look to, and people that. If anybody put a factory there, they're going to live in Prestonburg. It impacts the whole, you know, impacts uh, the whole community. You, everybody wants to say, "All right, well, you know, Pipe was doing this, and you're not. Or if Pants was doing this, or Lawrence came doing this, yeah, they got to quit worrying about what everybody else is doing. Right? Do what we can do. Whether yeah. it be Pipe, Pants, Prestonburg, Lawrence, County, yeah, Hyman, Kentucky, yeah, uh, we got to quit worrying about what everybody else is doing. Say, we're going to do this, yeah. Now we can reach out and work with them right? because we're bringing something different to the table. Yep. And you've got the community college headquartered there in Prestonsburg. That's a lot of employees. Oh, big Sandy's awesome. Huge resource um, there. Uh, have we got any questions, Josh? Just people excited. That's I mean, you can't beat that. Oh, we love excitement. Uh, hey, I do have something we can talk about. All right, what do you got? Uh, the apprenticeship program. We oh, just yeah, started. We, yeah, it was on the we, list. We discussed it earlier. <laughs> we got off on a science track. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, and, and I, um, Rhonda Potter was a, uh, he is a water treatment plant and a waste treatment plant operator. Uh -huh. And I was at a meeting, I was forced up to be at this meeting with a lot of operators. And, you know, he, he pointed out, he said, look, everybody in here is getting gray hair. Mm -hmm. Lots of it. Basically, what's happening is they're timing out. They're getting to the point where they can retire. We have to have people to replace them. Yeah. And it's not something you go out and take a test and you're certified. Right. It takes five years right now to the current state certification. Wow. Now, with the partnership we did with the Big Sandy Community Technical College and, and Kelly Cheney and them did an excellent job of helping us to do it through their workforce, mm -hmm. they can now get educated with a partnership and using the apprenticeship as on-the-job training in three years. Yeah. With that being said, we've now joined with the Secretary of Labor and they have come on, Derek Ramsey, uh -huh. they've come on board 
And uh, we now have a national certification for this. Wow, thing. that's great. You know, you're taking a kid who can go to Big Sandy, can get this class, work at one of the local water districts because they're wanting to hire these people anyway. While they're working, they're going to school. Right. They get this in three years. They get some experience here. They could go anywhere in the United States with yep. a national certification and get a job. Right. And it's, hey, they don't make them a millionaire overnight, but it's a steady job. Everybody needs water. Right. And once they get the water in, they got to get rid of it. Right, right, right. You know, there's there's two things right there that you have to have. Every community has to have it. Absolutely. So we're really excited about that project. The first Uh, in the country, right? The first in the state. It's the first one in the state right now um, that's ever been set up this way, and we don't know of another one. I don't want to brag that we're the first one in the country yet, but... We don't know of another one in the country. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's just pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we've been getting some information. It's sort of slow starting because everybody's sort of, they're sort of waiting to see. You know how it is. Yeah, I do. I understand. But uh, City Utilities there in Prestonburg has got about three guys lined up getting ready to go into the program, which is going to be uh, – the fact that we can get them on board quicker is just going to be an asset to us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk a lot about uh, vision, too, and and, and – trying to do this type of work when you're in um, what seems to be to some people maybe hopeless situations or they're trying to trying to imagine what a future could be somebody's got to step up and kind of paint the picture of what it could be or what's possible uh, we try to play that role from a regional perspective and share that story of what's possible in Appalachia across the state uh, and I know you've done that for Prestonsburg you know, right now where you're at what's next what's your what's your vision for for the, the next projects that you're working on or what you think Prestonsburg can be? In working with a group of people, and um, we, have, we have a project we're working on right now at CMH 23, and uh, that's, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but we have brought together people from Harlan, Prairie County. There will be people from Ledger County involved, uh, Greenup County, Boyd County, uh, Pike County, Floyd County, and we are going to give well, one, we're going to start with local artists. We're going to give them an opportunity to be on a national stage. That's awesome. And I'm talking a lot of subscribers to this program we're setting up. Yeah. And then also, we're going to be able to promote tourism. Yeah. Uh, I, I liken it to something along KET or BBC or uh-huh. one of those. Yeah. Joins country music television right it's just it's, it'll be something along those lines yeah but it's going to be based out of Prestonsburg only because we have the facilities there at the Mountain Arts Center right but now the people we've got involved are from all over the region yeah it's exactly. not a Prestonsburg thing I've been a part of those meetings that first meeting I remember it was just an idea and uh, it's so exciting it. to see where it's where it's going you know Keith Case Boat was actually playing golf uh-huh. and he brought the plan we've passed each other and he brought the idea to me. I said, I love it. Come see me. He came see me. I was lucky enough to stay involved. We had some uh, uh, local telecom got involved and really, they set the table for yeah. us to be where we're at right now. Yeah. And I don't mind telling you, it's your communications, D.D. Yeah. Gerhardt, yeah. who has he has great vision yeah. for East Kentucky. And um, he put this, he set the table for us. We've been able to sit down at the table and move forward to a point where I think that uh, oh, along around the middle of summer, people might really, really <laughs> enjoy seeing what's coming. That's exciting. I think that I can't wait to talk more about that because that project proves we don't have to wait. Uh, we don't have to wait for just a city government or a, a local governing agency to do something. Private sector got involved with it. They have the idea. They're kind of leading it. They're hand in hand. That's right. They, and, 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 I was just lucky enough to be able to hang on for the ride. Right, right. So, right. I, I mean, I, I'm fortunate that yeah. I was involved. Yeah. But the people that's involved in it, and, and when we come out, it'll be a nice press release, and we'll probably do a, a nice big showing with it. Yeah. Um, we are so excited about this project, and I've I've given a little teasers here and there, and I don't think I've given that anything get me in trouble <laughs> yet. But I, I want people to know that, uh, you know, we may be sitting here calm as a cucumber. Yeah. But we're like a we're like a duck going upstream. Well, yeah. fire, we're paddling. Yeah. We're yep. paddling hard. Uh, talking about artists, there, you, just real quick, you guys have a great local singer songwriter 
uh, seen the different restaurants oh, or yeah. that host that kind of once a week or something. You know, it's pretty cool when I go somewhere to speak and I can brag that any given night you can find live local music in Prestonsburg at a restaurant or somewhere. Yeah. And you know, we brought Front Porch Pickin' back and we may be moving Front Porch Pickin' to the amphitheater once everything's Oh, that'd be cool. Or when there's no shows going on. We right. might be doing a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, we, we've got the music, we've got the talent. Yeah. We've got the people that can do anything. There's not that in my mind. Um, you know the reason that uh, everybody left 23 and went north when the coal business went boom and all the factories kept screwed up. Well, one's work at it. Right. And two was they could do anything. Right. Because they did it here. Yeah. And you know, uh, from work on their own car to plant a garden or whatever. Right. So the people of Appalachian have so much to be proud of and not look at it as a detriment or as a negative. They've got so much to be proud of, and yeah. they really need to start capitalizing on it. Absolutely. I think I saw some questions hey, okay. uh, get, come up here. Uh, this is an interesting one, um, and I don't know, you may not have an answer to this, but I've heard this discussed a lot. Uh, the lakes, I think the Army Corps of Engineers, and there's, the, you look at lakes in Tennessee, and people buy property on the lake. And they build a cabin or a house, and we really don't have one of those in eastern Kentucky. Got a lot of lakes. We got a lot of room around the right, I mean. lake over there. Well, um, when they took the properties in, and I went to the Corps of Engineers, obviously, and I will say there's been discussion on that in more than one arena, yeah, or more than one venue. It would be, uh, we would be more than happy. Now, you know, I, I'm going to use this example: taking that surplus property from the Corps of Engineers. Stonecrest Golf Course, Stonecrest Mountain. Yeah. We have seven baseball fields, softball fields, or little league fields. We have an 18 hole championship golf course. We have two different subdivisions. Yeah. See, that was off course surplus, mm. surplus property. Okay. Hal Rogers uh, helped us get that. He literally had to get two acts of Congress wow. for that property to be developed. Yeah. You know, and that shows what, just, what a strong advocate he is Absolutely. for East Kentucky. So, you know, here we are. We've got. We've got Stonecrest Golf Course and Stonecrest area, which is awesome. We're sure Camp Mountain Trails is. Right. And it all came from surplus property. Yeah. Now, you know, there's a big process. Mm -hmm. And some of the properties they can't release because if you've been close to water, what is usually summer pool, you're underwater. Right. Three weeks ago. Right. So that has been kicked around a lot, and I've heard a lot of discussion on it. And, and I think it's an option that maybe, maybe we'll have it. Yeah, I see one about Jenny Wiley Lake on there. Yeah, there's one. Somebody asked about uh, why can't they stock fish? Yeah, they are and have. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it because uh, fish and wildlife they sort of fly under the radar, mm -hmm. and uh, they recently stocked some muskie over there, and they've been catching some muskie over at Dewey Lake, which four years ago you couldn't do. Right, and now they have them. Wow. So that, that's exciting stuff. That's a good that one. That we're getting a wide variety of fish in there. Right. That, that's really very exciting. The David Project? Oh, a Railroad Trail Project. We have uh, uh, got some money through abandoned mine lands, and that comes through Hal Rogers' office and the governor's office. Yeah. And we got uh, $1.95 million. Uh -huh. We are currently doing surveying on the property. The purchase will be coming very soon. Once we get our survey done, we've already done our environmentals. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll purchase the property, and basically what we're doing is we're purchasing the entire railroad from West Prestonsburg all the way to David, Kentucky. Okay. Now, we hope that within a year of getting that purchase done, we'll have the trails done. Oh, that'd be great. So we've got some great ideas. Matter of fact, the people out there could help me if I could, uh, if I could advertise a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of bridges, uh, railroad bridges, and I think there's four or five between West Prestonsburg and David. Uh-huh. So we want to do something different with them. Uh, one of them, for example, we'd love for it to be a, a covered bridge. Hmm. Or if maybe one of them will be built where it would look like the, the town, the bridge downtown, the old bridge. There is so many <laughs> options on there for people to be able to do. We'd love for people to give us ideas. Just sketch something out. So That'd be great. City Hall. That'd be great. We need people's input on this. All right, I think we're, uh, any any other questions? We're going to get ready to wrap this up. Um, I think we've answered everything. 
that people have commented on. Uh, I mentioned Vic, Vic, uh, Victoria, mm-hmm. Vicky Doucette a while ago. The, we have, we're in the project, and she's moved along a lot farther than I have as far as trying to connect their trailhead at Royalton uh-huh. with our trailhead at David. Okay. Now, once I get David done, we'll start looking at it a lot more actively. But uh, Yeah, people don't realize... I'm talking about seven Everybody's miles. a crow flies. Yeah, yeah you, you, I mean, once you get back to David, and there's strip property all the way between there. Yeah, it'll be easy to do. Yeah, so, you know, and and again, that's where we have to look at everything. Right. You can't just you can't walk around your head straight down. No. You got to see what's coming up. No, absolutely. You know, uh, I had a gentleman tell me one time. He said, "There's a reason your rearview mirror is so small." You check on your past, you look at a big windshield of your future. Uh, that's, that's a great And that's point. what East Kentucky and the Appalachian region is doing. Absolutely. Well, that, I mean, that leads me into my last question, um, and you've answered it really over and over, but I'll just kind of let you finish it out. Uh, do you believe there's a future in Appalachia? That's what this is all about. It's why we host this. Uh, you know, there's people that make a debate. Uh, you, know, you see New York Times articles that say, you know, the best way to help the people is help them get out of there. Uh, what, what's your answer to that? I'll tell you this. I don't believe it. I know it. Yeah. Um, and again, I go back to why people come into this area. They want independence. Mm-hmm. They really didn't want, they want to stand on, they grew their own food. Uh, they took care of everything on their own. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, I retired to state police. I, I got to read some records from some really old arrests and stuff. Mm-hmm. Where, um, an area up just near Airport City, before the uh, the train only went up so often, the sheriff had to wait two days to go up on a murder that somebody rode out on a train to tell them about. Had to wait two days to go back. They tied the they police themselves. They yeah. did everything themselves. Right. Everything was done themselves. Now we're having to go back to that a little bit. We have to be independent. We've got to do our own thing. Yeah. And the people of, of the Appalachian region are starting to see it. They're starting to buy into it. That is our future. Absolutely. And I, like again, I don't want to pick. I don't believe we have. I know we've got a future in East Kentucky. Absolutely. Well, that wraps up our show today. Um, I don't know how you could get to the end of this and doubt it. <laughs> that there's a future. <laughs> it's there. In Appalachia. Um, definitely go out. We'll comment and leave links to the city of Prestonburg and links to, to the mayor's contact information. Uh, if you're a, if you're a leader in another community and you got questions for him about other projects and things he's worked on, I guarantee you he'll answer your call and, and give you advice and uh, and probably ask you some questions too. Always willing to learn from others. Um, so thanks for signing on. Share this with your friends. Follow us. We'll try to be on uh, once a week. Uh, again, we believe and we know. We know there's a future in Appalachia. Thanks. Thank you. all